Scientech Presence, Semtel's Technology Learning Software, Robotics. Robotics is the branch of technology that deals with the design, construction, operation and application of robots and computer systems for their control sensory feedback and information processing. A robot is a mechanical or virtual agent, usually an electromechanical machine, that is guided by a computer program or electronic circuitry. Robots can be autonomous or semi-autonomous, and range from humanoids, such as Honda Zasimo and Tosi's Topio to industrial robots. Let's start with types of robot. Robots can be classified into two broad categories, that is robot by locomotion and robot by application. First, we discuss about robot by locomotion. The shape of a robot is the most basic approach to define a type, and it is relative with its locomotion system. These type of robots are shown in an animation. Now, robot by application, it is a hybrid system, can be used to perform an application's task. So in this type, we don't care about shape and there are various applications of robots in industry, home and also in military. In robot by locomotion, first is stationary robots. There are various types of stationary robot as we see in animation. We will discuss each, one by one. First we take Cartesian robots. Typical Cartesian robots have three linear axes of freedom, which are perpendicularly oriented at each other. Because of their rigid structure, this type of robots usually offer good levels of precision and repeatability. Next is cylindrical robots. The cylindrical robot has three axes of movement two of which are linear and one is circular. So usually robots of this type can move along Z and Y axis and rotate along Z axis. Cylindrical robot used for specific handling and assembly task or spot welding. Now, spherical robots. Spherical robots, sometimes regarded as polar robots, are stationary robot arms, with spherical or near spherical work envelopes, that can be positioned in a polar coordinate system. Next is SCARA robots. The SCARA acronym stands for Selective Compliant Assembly Robot Arm, or Selective Compliant Articulated Robot Arm. Its arm was rigid in the z-axis and pliable in the xy-axis which allowed it to adapt to the holes in the xy-axis. Another one is articulated robots. An articulated robot is a robot with rotary joints. Articulated robots can range from simple to jointed structures to systems with ten or more interacting joints. They are powered by a variety of means, including electric motors. Parallel robots. A parallel manipulator is a mechanical system that uses several computer-controlled serial chains to support a single platform or end effectors. Perhaps the best-known parallel manipulator is formed from six linear actuators that support a movable base for devices such as flight simulators. Next type of robot by locomotion is wheeled robots which are most popular among the consumer market. Their differential steering provides low cost and simplicity. Types of wheeled robot are shown in animation. 
we will discuss each, one by one. In this, first is single wheeled. One wheeled robots are extremely difficult to keep balanced, due to the single point of contact with the ground. A single wheel robot could be a cheaper solution for a robot receptionist, who has to work on one floor only. Next is, two wheeled robots. Like one wheeled robots, two wheeled robots are also harder to balance than other types, because they must keep moving to maintain upright. The center of gravity of the robot body is kept below the axle. Usually this is accomplished by mounting the batteries below the body. Next one is, three-wheeled robots. In this robot direction may be changed, by varying the relative rate of rotation of the two separately driven wheels. If both the wheels are driven in the same direction and speed, the robot will go straight. Another one is four-wheeled robots. Four-wheeled robots are more stable than the three-wheel version. Since the center of gravity has to remain inside the rectangle, formed by the four wheels, instead of a triangle. Next is, five or more wheeled robot. The Mars rovers are six-wheeled robots, that navigate across Martian terrain after landing. They are used to examine territory, interesting landmarks and make observations about the surface of Mars. They have a suspension system which keeps all six wheels in contact with the surface. Tracked Robots A tracked vehicle is a vehicle that runs on continuous tracks instead of wheels. Tracked vehicles include, construction vehicles, military armored vehicles and unmanned ground vehicles. The principal design advantages of tracked over wheeled vehicles are that, they are in contact with a larger surface area. Another type of locomotive robot is legged robot. It can be classified into following categories as shown in animation, we will discuss each, one by one. First is one-legged robots. In 1980 and 1993, there was a lot of research in making one-legged robots, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Leo NXT Hopper and Toyota's robot are the example of the one-legged robot. Next is two-legged robots. Two-legged robots have probably seen the most development dollars, since humanoid robots have been envisioned, since the very beginning of the field. The design of a bipedal passive dynamic walker, begins with the concept of a wheel with spokes. Now, three-legged robots. Three-legged robots are statically stable, since there are three contact points to ground. For a robot to be statically stable, it requires a minimum of three contact points to ground. Now, for legged robots. Four-legged robots have the advantage of being statically stable, when not moving, but require dynamic walking control. Boston Dynamics has developed, a four-legged robot, for D, A, R, P, A, called Big Dog. They claim that this is the most advanced quadruped robot on Earth. Another one is five or six-legged robots. A hexapod robot is a mechanical vehicle that walks on six legs. Since a robot can be statically stable on three or more legs, a hexapod robot has a great deal of flexibility in how it can move. If legs become disabled, the robot may still be able to walk. Robots with lots of legs 
As we can see from nature, centipedes have a great level of traffic ability. The count of legs, as well as the length to width ratio of a creature, can be accounted for this ability. That's why centipedes, along with other creatures, are researched and imitated. Next type of locomotive robot is swimming robots. Swimming robot is an ocean data service provider, it is an autonomous, environmentally powered ocean going platform for gathering and remotely transmitting information about the surface of the ocean, such as water temperature, and the atmospheric conditions above, such as wind speed. Another locomotive robot is flying robots. Flying robots use various kinds of technologies. We will group these robots by their flying system, such as air balloon robots, robots with rotary wings, wing flapping robots and plane robots. Rolling robotic balls. This robot is a pendulum-driven mobile spherical robot, with a fixed axis. The axis is a bit extended to provide place for cameras and other possible hardware, such as sensors, microphones or speakers. Next is modular robots. Modular self-reconfiguring robotic systems or self-reconfigurable modular robots, are autonomous kinematic machines, with variable morphology. Self-reconfiguring robots are also able to deliberately change their own shape, by rearranging the connectivity of their parts. Next is micro-robots. Micro-robotics is the field of miniature robotics in particular mobile robots with characteristic dimensions less than 1 mm. The term can also be used for robots, capable of handling micrometer size components. Another one is snake robots. A snake arm robot is a slender hyperredundant manipulator. The high number of degrees of freedom, allows the arm to snake along a path, or around an obstacle, hence the name is given as, snake arm. Now, we move to see, classification of robots, based on their application. First is industrial robots. An industrial robot is defined as, an automatically controlled, reprogrammable, multi-purpose manipulator, programmable in three or more axes. Typical applications of robots include, welding, painting, assembly, pick and place, product inspection, and testing. Domestic robots. This type of robots includes quite different devices such as, robotic vacuum cleaners, robotic pool cleaners, sweepers, gutter cleaners and other robots, that can do different chores. Also, some surveillance and telepresence robots could be regarded as household robots, if used in that environment. Next is medical robots. Medical robots are robots, that allow surgeons greater access to areas under operation, using more precise and less invasive methods. They are most telemanipulators, which use the surgeon's actions on one side, to control the effectors on the other side. Another one is military robots. This type of robots includes bomb disposal robots, different transportation robots, reconnaissance drones. These robots initially created for military purposes, can be used in law enforcement. 
search and rescue and other related fields. Next is space robots. Space robots used on the International Space Station, Conodum, that was used in shuttles, as well as Mars rovers and other robots used in space. Another type is hobby and competition robots. These are the robots that you create, such as, line followers, sumo bots, robots made just for fun and robots made for competition. In this lecture, we will study about sensors. Sensor also called transducer, is a device which converts one form of energy into another form, such as, a microphone which converts sound into an electrical form, or, a light sensor, which senses the light and gives output according to intensity of light. So, we can say that, sensor is a device that detects and responds to some type of input from the physical environment, such as light, heat, motion, moisture, pressure and used to switch voltages or currents. Basically, sensor can be classified into two categories, such as analog sensor and digital sensor. We will learn both, one by one, First is analog sensor. Analog sensors produce a continuous output signal, which is generally proportional to the quantity being measured. Physical quantities such as, temperature, speed, pressure and displacement, are all analog quantities. For example, the temperature of a liquid, can be measured using a thermometer or thermocouple, which continuously responds to temperature changes, as the liquid is heated up or cooled down. Next type of sensor is digital sensor. Digital sensors produce a discrete output signal or voltage, that is a digital representation of the quantity being measured, Digital sensors produce a binary output signal, in the form of logic 1 or logic 0. Now, as the disk rotates with the speed of the shaft, each slot passes by the sensor, in turn producing an output pulse, representing logic 1 or logic 0 level. Now, these pulses are sent to a register of counter and finally to an output display, to show the speed or revolutions of the shaft. Humanoid robots, correct its position without stopping, based on information obtained from its sensors. Such types of sensor are, ground sensor, visual sensor and, ultrasonic sensor. Next is, light detecting sensor. It detects the intensity of light and gives the output according to it. Light detecting sensor is used in homes or offices for security purpose. It can also be used in automatic street light system. The light sensor is a passive devices, that convert light energy, whether visible or in the infrared parts of the spectrum, into an electrical signal output. Now, let's see types of light sensors. It can be grouped into three main categories, that are, photoconductive cells photovoltaic cells and photojunction devices. First let's see, photoconductive cells. These photo devices vary their electrical resistance, when subjected to light. 
photoconductivity results from light hitting a semiconductor material, which controls the current flow through it. Now, photovoltaic cells. These photo devices generate an EMF in proportion to the radiant light energy received, and are similar in effect to photoconductivity. The most common photovoltaic material is selenium, used in solar cells. Next is, photojunction devices. These photo devices are mainly true semiconductor devices, such as, photodiode or phototransistor, which use light, to control the flow of electrons and holes, across their PN junction. Photoresistors are semiconductor devices that uses light energy to control the flow of electrons, and hence the current flowing through them. The commonly used photoconductive cell is called the light-dependent resistor or LDR. The light-dependent resistor is made from a piece of exposed semiconductor material, such as cadmium sulfide. A photoresistor is made of a high resistance semiconductor. If light falling on the device is of high enough frequency, then photons absorbed by the semiconductor give bound electrons enough energy to jump into the conduction band. LDR changes its electrical resistance from several thousand ohms in the dark to only a few hundred ohms when light falls upon it, by creating whole electron pairs in the material. The most common type of photovoltaic light sensor is, the solar cell. Solar cells convert light energy directly into DC electrical energy, in the form of a voltage or current, to a resistive load, such as, a light, battery or motor. As we see in animation, Photovoltaic cells are made from single crystal silicon PN junctions, the same as photodiodes with a very large light sensitive region, but are used without the reverse bias. When illuminated, the light energy causes electrons to flow through the PN junction and an individual solar cell can generate an open circuit voltage of about 0.58 volt. Solar cells have a positive and negative side, just like a battery. Next type of sensor is temperature sensor. A temperature sensor is a device that gathers data concerning the temperature from a source and converts it to a form that can be understood by electronic components. The most commonly used temperature sensor is LM35 temperature sensor. The LM35 series are precision integrated circuit temperature sensors, whose output voltage is linearly proportional to the Celsius temperature. LM35 temperature sensor is a three-terminal device. When we increase the temperature, 
output of the sensor also increases. Next, we will discuss about application of temperature sensor. LM35 sensor used to detect temperature rise in the environment, such as a device which detects high temperature and give the information by buzzer. These types of system is used for security purpose. LM35 sensor is also used to detect a temperature and display it into the display devices, such as LCD in seven segments. Next type of sensor is gas sensor. In current technology scenario, Monitoring of gases produced, is very important. From home appliances, such as air conditioners to electric chimneys and safety systems at industries, so monitoring of gases is very crucial. Gas sensors are very important part of such systems. Now, construction of gas sensor. The sensor module consists of a steel exoskeleton, under which a sensing element is housed. This sensing element is subjected to current through connecting leads. This current is known as heating current through it. Gas sensor module has a steel mesh copper clamping ring and connecting leads. The top part is a stainless steel mesh, which take care of filtering out the suspended particles. Now, the pins are placed on a Bakelite base, which is a good insulator and provides firm gripping to the connecting leads of the sensor. Here, the hexapod structure is constituted by the sensing element, and six connecting legs that extend beyond the Bakelite base. Now, the hollow sensing element, which is made up from aluminium oxide based ceramic, has a coating of tin oxide. Using a ceramic substrate, increases the heating efficiency and tin oxide being sensitive, towards absorbing desired gas. Here, leads responsible for output signals, are connected using platinum wires, which convey small changes in the current, that passes through the sensing element. Gas sensor has six leads, four of the six leads, A, and B are for signal fetching, while two, represented by H, are used to provide sufficient heat to the sensing element. Next is working of gas sensor. Gas sensor used in smoke alarm circuit, absorb gas molecules. Change the resistance of the tin dioxide layer. This changes the current flowing through the sensing element, and is conveyed through the output leads. The output of gas sensor is analog in nature, so we have to use analog to digital converter or a pamp, to convert analog signal into digital form, for further processing. Next type of sensor is ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensors are device, that use electrical mechanical energy transformation, 
to measure distance from the sensor to the target object. This sensor consists of four pins, that are VCC connect to 5 volt DC, trigger pulse input that triggers the sensor. Echo indicates the reception of echo from the target and ground. An ultrasonic sensor consists of a transmitter and receiver, which are available as separate units, or embedded together as single unit. Now, we will discuss, working of ultrasonic sensor in six steps. Step 1. Make trigger pin of the sensor, high for 10 microseconds. This initiates a sensor cycle. Step 2. 8 into 40 kHz pulses will be sent, from the transmitting piezo transducer of the sensor, after which, time the echo pin on the sensor, will go from low to high. As we see in animation. Now, step 3. The 40 kHz sound wave will bounce off the nearest object and return to the sensor. Step 4. When the sensor detects the reflected sound wave, the echo pin will go low again. As we see in animation. Next is step 5. The distance between the sensor and the detected object can be calculated based on the length of time. The echo pin is high. In the last step, if no object is detected, the echo pin will stay high for 38 millisecond, and then go low. Next, we are going to discuss about application of ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensors is used in obstacle avoiding robot. If an object is in the front of the robot, then it take decision and turns. In this robot, ultrasonic sensor sense the objects. Next application of ultrasonic sensor is for automatic car parking system. Here, in automatic car parking system. Sensor calculates the distance or direction of an object, from the time it takes for a sound wave, to travel to the target and back, and gives the instruction to car, where to park. In humanoid robot, ultrasonic sensors are used to detect obstacles, including glass, that the visual sensor cannot detect. Next type of sensor is position sensor. The most commonly used of all the position sensors, is the potentiometer. Because it is an inexpensive and easy to use position sensor. Here is the construction of potentiometer, as shown in animation. It is a wiper contact, linked to a mechanical shaft that can be either angular or linear in its movement, and its resistance is proportional to position. Another type of position sensor is rotary encoder. Rotary encoders are non-contact optical devices, used for converting the angular position of a rotating shaft, into an analog or digital data code. In other words, they convert mechanical movement into an electrical signal. There are two basic types of rotary optical encoders, that is incremental encoders and absolute position encoders. First we will discuss about incremental encoder. An incremental encoder is an electromechanical device, used to provide feedback signals for motion control applications. A common application of an incremental encoder, is to indicate the position of a rotary or linear mechanism. As the disc rotates, 
pulses from the emitter, strike the sensor every time. A slot on the disc is aligned between the emitter and the sensor. Each pulse of light is converted to an electric pulse by a signal conditioner. If the slots are one degree apart, the encoder will produce 360 pulses each time it makes a revolution. If the encoder turns 30 degrees, the counter will show 30 to indicate the corresponding position. Next type of rotary encoder is absolute position encoders. Absolute position encoders are more complex than quadrature encoders. They provide a unique output code for every single position of rotation, indicating both position and direction. Absolute encoder has four concentric tracks that vary in size to form sections with unique 4-bit code patterns, to represent 16 positions. Each 4-bit number represents a sector of equal size. Absolute encoders are used in applications, when the devices being measured are inactive for long period of time. These encoders are also used, when power to equipment is turned on and off frequently, such as telescope and grounds. Now, we will study about actuator. The actuator part of the robot is made by the use of motors. Basically there are three types of motor, which is mostly used in robotics, that are, DC motor stepper motor and servo motor. First, we are going to learn about DC motor. DC motors convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. They run on direct current. Now, construction of brushed DC motor. The brush DC electric motor generates torque directly from DC power, supplied to the motor by using internal commutation, stationary magnets and rotating electrical magnets. Now, we see detailed description of all the parts of DC motor. First is axle. Axle is a rotor part of a brush DC motor. When sufficient voltage and current apply to motor, axle rotates in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Now, the coil. It is mounted on an axle and it is placed between the cylindrical concave poles of a magnet. Next is rectangular coil. It is made of insulated copper wire, which is wound on a soft iron core. The armature becomes an electromagnet, when a current passes through it. This is commutator, it is used to reverse the direction of flow of current. Commutator is a copper ring, split into two parts, C1 and C2. Next is two small strips of carbon, known as brushes. Press slightly against the two split rings and the split rings rotate between the brushes. The carbon brushes are connected to a DC source. Now, DC motor requires two magnets of opposite polarity and an electric coil, which acts as an electromagnet. The repellent and attractive electromagnetic forces of the magnets provide the torque that causes the DC motor to turn. This is an outer body part of a brushed DC motor, known as cover or casing. DC motor has two terminals, that are positive and negative, sufficient voltage and current are applied to these terminals, to drive a DC motor. Next is working of brushed DC motor. 
When positive terminal of motor is connected with positive terminal of battery, and negative terminal of motor is connected with negative terminal of battery, then motor rotates in clockwise direction. As we see in animation. Now, when positive terminal of motor is connected with negative terminal of battery, and negative terminal of motor is connected with positive terminal of battery, then motor rotates in anti-clockwise direction. As we see in animation. Now, let's see principles of DC motor. The DC motor works on the principle of Lorentz force, which states that, when a wire carrying current is placed in a region having magnetic field, then the wire experiences a force. This Lorentz force provides a torque to the coil to rotate. DC motor has a copper wire, because it is a good conductor of electricity and it is in rectangular shape. Here, as we see, horseshoe magnet produces magnetic field from north to south. Here, split ring acts as a commutator, it reverses the direction of flow of current through a circuit. Brushes P and Q are used to make alternate contacts with the split rings X and Y. Battery is the source of power, which provides electric energy. Direction of the current through the circuit, is shown in animation. Direction of magnetic field is from north to south pole, which is also shown in animation. A force works on current carrying conductor, when it is placed in a magnetic field, its direction is given by Fleming's left hand rule. The forces acting on AB, pushes it upwards, while the forces acting on CD, pushes it downwards. When we reverse the direction of flow of current from DCVA, then coil will rotate anti-clockwise. By this principle, DC motor rotates in both clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. Here we see the construction of geared DC motor. A geared DC motor has a gear assembly, attached to the motor. The speed of motor is counted in terms of rotations of the shaft per minute. And is termed as RPM. Next is brushless DC motor. A brushless DC motor is a synchronous electric motor, powered by a direct current. As the name implies, the brushless DC motor does not operate using brushes. Rather it operates with a controller via electronic commutation. Typical brushless DC motors uses a rotating permanent magnet in the rotor, and stationary electrical current or coil magnets on the motor. Housing for the rotor. First let's understand, what is stepper motor? Stepper motor or step motor is a brushless or synchronous motor, which divides a full rotation into a number of steps. A stepper motor rotates in discrete step angles, such as 30, 15, 5, 2.5, 2 and 1.8. By construction, the step motors come into three broad classes, that is, permanent magnet stepper, variable reluctance stepper and hybrid stepper motor. First, we will start with, construction of permanent magnet stepper motor. A permanent magnet stepper motor, consists of a stator with windings and a rotor, 
with permanent magnet poles. Next we see, working of permanent magnet stepper motor. Here, the rotor and stator poles of a permanent magnet stepper, are not teethed, instead, the rotor have alternative north and south poles, parallel to the axis of the rotor shaft. Now, when a stator is energized, it develops electromagnetic poles. Here, magnetic rotor aligns along magnetic field of the stator. Other stator is then energized in the sequence. So that rotor moves and aligns itself to new magnetic field. This way, energizing the stators in a fixed sequence, rotates the stepper motor by fixed angles. The resolution of a permanent magnet stepper motor can be increased by increasing the number of poles in the rotor, increasing the number of phases, and also by increasing the number of coil in phases. Now let's see, construction of variable reluctance stepper motor. In variable reluctance stepper motor, the rotor is teethed and made of metal, but it is not permanently magnetized. Now, working of variable reluctance stepper motor. The variable reluctance stepper, has a toothed non-magnetic soft iron rotor. When the stator coil is energized, the rotor moves to have a minimum gap between the stator and its teeth. Here, as we see, the teeth of the rotor are designed, so that when they are aligned with one stator, they get misaligned with the next stator. Now, when the next stator is energized, the rotor moves to align its teeth with the next stator. This way, energizing stators in a fixed sequence, completes the rotation of the step motor. As we see in animation, the resolution of a variable reluctance stepper motor, can be increased by increasing the number of teeth in the rotor, by increasing the number of phases, and also, by increasing the number of turns in phase. Next is, construction of hybrid stepper motor. In hybrid stepper motor, rotor has teeth placed on the directional axis. Here, the rotor is divided into parts between constant magnet poles. Now, working of hybrid stepper motor. A hybrid stepper is a combination of both permanent magnet and the variable reluctance. It has a magnetic teethed rotor, which better guides magnetic flux to preferred location in the air gap. As we see in animation, the magnetic rotor has 48 teeth, in which 24 for North Poles and 24 for the South Poles. The rotor teeth are designed, so that the North and South Poles arrange in alternative manner. After studying this, we can see that, the hybrid motor rotates on same principle of energizing the stator coils in a sequence. Here, we see a program, to interface stepper motor with 8051 microcontroller, in wave drive stepping modes. As you can see in program, it is a header file for 8051 microcontroller programming. First, we define the port P2 as output port. Now, defining the main function. Here, 
while one provides infinite loop. Now, sending 0 ax 0 1 to port P2, by this, stepper motor rotates by one step. After that, we provide delay. Here, we define our delay function. Now, defining integer i. In this loop the value of i time is 350, so this loop run from the value, 0 to 350. Now, same process is applied, and stepper motor rotates continuously. Another type of motor is servo motor. A servo motor is a rotary actuator, that allows for precise control of angular position. It consists of a motor, coupled to a sensor for position feedback, through a reduction gearbox. It also requires a relatively sophisticated controller, often a dedicated module designed specifically for use with servo motors. Servo motor has three wires, one for positive supply, one for grounding and one for PWM signal. Next, we are going to discuss about, construction of servo motor. Inside the servo motor, there are controlling circuit, DC motor and a potentiometer for position sensing. At the outer part, there are the gear arrangement, by this horn of the servo motor is connected. Now, let's see application of robots. It is mainly classified into two categories, that is industry application and non-industry application. First we will discuss about industrial application. First is material handling applications, which involves the movement of material or parts from one location to another, as you can see in animation. Second type of industrial application is processing application. This is a miscellaneous category, in which the robot is used to perform some manufacturing process, such as spray painting. Next application of robots in industry is assembly application. Robot welding is the use of mechanized programmable tools, which completely automate the welding process, by both performing the weld and handling the part. Now, we are going to discuss about non-industrial robots. First is domestic robot. A domestic robot, or service robot is a robot, that is used for household chores. This type of domestic robot, does chores, around and inside the homes. Different kinds of application include, robotic vacuum cleaners and floor washing robots, that clean floors with sweeping and wet mopping functions.
Next is military robot, which is mainly used for spying. Military robots are autonomous robots or remote controlled devices, designed for military applications. Spy robot is a four-wheeled robot, outfitted with several cameras, radar, and possibly a firearm, that automatically performs random or pre-programmed patrols, around the military base. Some humanoid robots can move in, synchronization with a person, and accurately receive or hand over a tray, by detecting the movement of a person, through its camera eyes and sensor.